Hi friends! This week we've been thinking about the Holy Spirit, considering the Spirit's work in the biblical narrative as well as in the story of our own personal life. Today let's consider the way that the Spirit moves in us to guide and direct us. Several years ago, my wife Sharon and I took a hot air balloon ride during a trip to Arizona. It was beautiful and peaceful and not too scary. <laughs> when traveling in a hot air balloon, the wind determines your course. Of course, the operators of balloons play an important role too. They have to understand the wind patterns and which way the wind blows at different altitudes. They have to cooperate with the wind and not fight against it. And no matter how skilled and experienced the operators are, sometimes the wind takes them where they do not want to go. <laughs> Remember in Hebrew and Greek, the word for wind also means spirit. Just as the course of a hot air balloon is determined by a combination of the wind and the operator, the wind being the primary, so the course of our life is determined by the cooperation of the Holy Spirit and us. And if we're smart, the Spirit will be primary. Being guided by the Spirit means that we need to be familiar with the Spirit's movements, like toward joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It means that we need to cooperate with the Spirit and not fight against it. And it means that sometimes the Spirit will take us to places we might not want to go. <laughs> Have you ever had an experience where a parent or a child, a teacher, a coach, a spouse, or a friend made you go somewhere or do something that you didn't really want to do, but then in the end it was exactly where you needed to be or what you needed to do? A few weeks ago I told you about how I felt God's Spirit calling me to pastoral ministry. I was in an annual church business meeting as a high schooler. I didn't want to be there. It was so boring. And yet that was exactly the place where the Spirit awakened my mind and tugged at my heart. So even when we go to worship or Bible study or a prayer meeting or a fellowship group or watch a daily message begrudgingly, we're still putting ourselves in a good position to experience the nudge of the Holy Spirit. Pete Hooverman, a member of Centenary, calls those spirit nudges snudges. <laughs> and they can happen anytime, anywhere, not just in church settings. When we feel the snudge to pray for someone, or to send an encouraging note or text, or to talk to someone who looks lonely, or to be nice to an annoying sibling or friend, or to make a sacrifice, or to hold our tongue. That's the Spirit guiding our life. One time when Sharon and I were meeting in Columbus for dinner, I parked on the street and before I even had a chance to turn off the car, a man was tapping on my window. <laughs> He was a young man, but a little bit rough looking, and my first thought was, oh my goodness, is he going to try to steal my car? <laughs> I thought about just pulling out and driving around the block, but I also felt a snudge. <laughs> so I stepped out of the car and into the cold and talked to the young man. Of course he wanted money. He gave me a long, detailed story about how he ended up in downtown Columbus with no money and no friends. And I listened carefully, I asked a few questions, and I gave him some practical advice about where to find a meal and a place to stay for the night and how to get to the bus station. Honestly, I can't remember if I gave him money or not, but I did feel another snudge and I asked him if I could pray with him. 
And he gave me one of those surprised, how did you know kind of looks, and he agreed. And we stood there in the middle of Columbus, in the middle of the sidewalk, in the cold, <laughs> praying together. And when we finished, he was in tears. He thanked me, we parted ways and said goodbye. Paying attention to those snudges took me to a place where I didn't really want to be. But in the end, both of us were blessed by my cooperation with the Holy Spirit to go where he led me. Now, I confess to you that there are many times when I have not cooperated with the Holy Spirit and when I have ignored the snudges. And I'm sure that there are even many more times when I've been so self-absorbed or so preoccupied that I missed the snudges altogether. <laughs> but as we grow in our faith and as we practice paying attention and obeying, we get better and better about discerning the Holy Spirit's guidance and following it. Next time, we'll think about discerning the Spirit's voice. Thanks for listening today, and have a great weekend.